Um, so I'm Allie, I'm the principal of Laguna. Uh, so here we're gonna talk a little bit about our comprehensive site, uh, comprehensive support and improvement plan. So Tony kind of went over what this is and why we are, why we are where we are. Um, Laguna's graduation rate is about 55%. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, the other issue with Laguna is our college and career readiness numbers. Um, in the California State Dashboard, we're in the red, which means that um, the state is saying that we do not graduate enough students college and career ready, um, according to different things like CTE completion, as well um, as JC enrollment and, um, and other things. So as for our needs assessment, um, these, this was really the places where I started looking at data. Um, so first thing I did is I looked at our youth truth survey. I wanted to know what our kids felt about Laguna and where I felt, where our kids felt our Laguna needed to go. Um, I did give a, a parent survey um, about different program options. And then I gave a similar survey to the kids as well. So I could kind of get a comparison about where the kids think we need to go and where the um, parents think we need to go. Um, it was just, we just passed our census day. Um, so our, the day they, where Aries uploads all of our parent, all of our student information um, into uh, CBED so that we can kind of get a sense of where our student population, where our demographics are. So I'm gonna go over a little bit of that. Um, and then this is kind of a daily thing. We, I look at grad status reports. So when I came in at the beginning of the year um, or last summer, um, we only we were looking at about 20% of our senior class being mathematically able to graduate. Um, and so like we that's that's we have to do something. Um, so we could talk a little bit about that. Um, looking at attendance rates. Um, and then the other thing that I did was I looked at um, I looked at all of the other continuation high schools across the county. Um, I, I came from another continuation high school, so I had that benefit. Um, and then I did analysis of credit systems, the way that continuation high schools give out credits um, and when they give out credits. Um, so the, this is our demographic. So right now, as of today, um, we're at 60% free and reduced lunch, 12% uh, homeless, 18% special education, 12% who have a 504, so a disability, and then 7% in foster care. Um, so we have a pretty high degree of need at Laguna. Um, so just from looking at that, um, this thanks to Jeff, Jeff actually made this for us. Um, this is our graduation rates over the course of the last three years. And what is most um, striking to me is the green line because that's our socioeconomically disadvantaged kids. So uh, the graduation rates have declined 30% over the last three years for our socioeconomically disadvantaged kids. And so if I think about what our kids need and where we can help, like our kids need access to a high school diploma. Um, I th first, yeah, they just do. Like that, that's our job, that's my job, that's Laguna's job. We get kids to graduate from high school. And right now, historically the last three years, we can do better. So here's where, Here's where we're gonna try and do better. Um, this is our identified actions. These are the things essentially CSI grants us money. Here's what we are doing. Not all of the things that we're doing take money. And in fact, most of them don't take any money, but I'm gonna, so I'm gonna try and go over all of them with you. Um, really, we identified four areas of need. Like one is just the base needs. What do our kids need in order to feel safe and successful? And that's food, like that. that's our, our that's why we've partnered with the food bank. I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, if you look at re research shows about socioeconomically disadvantaged students, um, they need connection in order to be successful at school. And in fact, that's what our youth truth survey says is that that's, that's kind of where our kids, that's where our, our staff shine, our staff's phenomenal. Um, our office manager, Kimberly Nyberg, I mean, she knows every single kid who walks in that door and she gets them whatever they need. And that's what our kids need. Um, but they also need social emotional learning. Um, we need access to credit makeup. So again, I'll, I'll go a little bit more into that. Um, and then we need to find ways to engage kids um, to help our attendance rate. Our, our attendance rate is 57%, our grad rate is 55%, and that, there's a pretty significant correlation there. The kids who come to school, we can get through, and the kids who aren't coming, we need to find a way to get them there. Um, so again, we have high density of low, low income foster homeless youth. 
So what I did was we partnered, I contacted the Redwood Empire Food Bank um, and they have a student pantry system, but that's not currently what we're using right now. We're using an emergency food distribution service with them. Um, it's totally free, it services anybody. And why this is so vitally important to Laguna is that allows us to connect with our kids in our community. So, I mean, we fed 140 people today. We probably fed about 20 or 30 of our families. And the, the cool thing about that is they get to walk in, like walk onto our campus, socially distanced with masks. Um, but we, we get to connect with them. We get to know what's going on in their lives. We get to figure out, we get our, um, one of our therapists is using this as an opportunity to meet with the kids individually. We get them connected to Edmentum, which is our online credit recovery system. And that we get to build this amazing relationship with our community all around food. Um, parents then get to see Laguna and our, our staff as allies and not adversaries. And I think a lot of the kids who come over to Laguna or who come into alternative ed school has not been an ally. And that's, I, I wanna make that for us. Um, the other thing that we are doing was we're trying to build some community spirit. And again, I'm gonna thank uh, Kimberly Nyberg because this was her idea. Um, we, we do apple pressing every year. We live in, you know, we're in Sebastopol. We live amongst apple farmers. So every year we make cider. And so it was her idea that we, like we build that pride and we build that in that capacity in our kids of pride in West County. So we bought an apple press and it's this massive machine and we have an old shed that we're going to store it in. So then every year, all of our kids can experience that. Um, and then we can do things like use the apples for, for another class that we're developing. I'll talk about that in a little bit. So again, this is free. We're not, the, the apple press costs money, but the, the food doesn't, it doesn't cost us anything, but it's vitally important to our community. Um, as far as social emotional learning, um, so uh, Laguna put an advisory structure into our schedule last year, and that was really awesome. So it gives the teachers a chance to connect with kids. Advisory is like a content-free class where the teachers and the um, kids just get to connect for 10 minutes a day. So last year they did it and they did mindfulness music. Um, but the problem was, is they had that first period. So we are going to try to move it to later in the day because that first period, it becomes a throwaway period where kids don't feel like they have to go to it. Um, it's important. And I would say it's probably the most important thing that kids do all day because they get pretty a pretty small number of kids and really intense um, support from, from a staff member. So there's four things that we're doing in advisory. Um, the first thing is council. So we as a staff did council training. And if you don't know what council is, it's like restorative circles. So it's the basis of restorative justice. So we did a two day training um, at the end of the summer and we all learned how to lead these circles. And we lead them as a staff once, uh, once every other week. Um, we use this as a moment kind of for self-reflection and also just to use the power of telling stories to, to hear each other and, and to support each other. And we're gonna push that out to the kids as well. So when the kids come back, we are gonna do this once a week where the kids do run a council session. Um, we also like to use this for Edmentum, which is the online credit recovery system that we use. Um, again, historically, the kids did not use Edmentum at Laguna. It's a program that we've always paid for or that we've paid for for the last few years at least. And um, so, because I also oversee independent study, it, like, it's a perfect connection. So our kids um, are already using Edmentum and we are going to have them continue to use Edmentum in advisory. Um, we're also partnering with SCO for a program called Roots to Rise, which is a social emotional learning program. Um, because of our high density of low income foster and homeless youth, um, we actually qualify for funding through SCO as well. So they have a grant um, and so they are actually supporting um, us to get training on a social emotional learning program that where we learn how to teach the kids um, mindfulness strategies um, that in little 10 minute, sec 10 minute lessons and um, then we lead the kids through these strategies once a week. Um, and then the last thing, which is what our teachers excel at is there, the, that teacher, that advisory teacher is the advocate for that kid. Like they get to be, and I hate to say this, but like the parent on campus, they're the one that gets to stick up for that kid. They're not the disciplinarian. They're the one who gets to say, hey, Allie, what can we do to help them? How can I help? What can I do? And that's really important for, for everybody, but especially for our kids. Um, so as far as credit makeup, um, 
we did a master schedule change at the end of the summer um and it was in if you guys have ever been at a high school doing a master schedule change is a massive thing and like you know, god bless kim finch who are our counselor because we talked about it and within like a day we're like all right we're gonna do this and it was a big deal so we shifted from a six period day to a four period day and we're doing what's called a four by four so the kids are enrolled in four classes simultaneously at the same time um, and the kids, the, cl the classes are longer, but they get a whole semester's worth of credit over the course of, um, of, of one semester. So kids make up credits faster. Um, so at, at, we used to give kids credit at a base rate of 60. Now we give kids credit at a base rate of 80. So essentially that means that it bumped up our numbers at, at the beginning of the year with the base rate of 60. We were at about 18% of our seniors could attain graduation rates without extraneous means and that bumped us up to about 44 percent so about 44 percent of our kids were within reach of graduation if they were getting 80 credits as opposed to 60. Um, it also is pretty cool because it allows us to have more electives um, we Laguna hasn't had the opportunity to have a lot of electives because our kids are credit deficient and it takes them a long time to get through classes but if they can get through their classes their core classes faster um, they get to have more electives and we'll talk about that in a little bit um, the other things is we used every single, every single one of our kids was entered into two classes on Edmentum. One was financial literacy and the other one was career options. Um, so if the kids finish the classes, they get 10 credits and also they get to see that they can be successful A in online learning and B in learning at all. Edmentum is a pretty cool program and it, it like, it, it, it gives them a constant like measure of success. There's like a little green person and if, as long as you stay in the green person, you, you keep going. And so it's, it's, a cool, it's a cool program for them. And so again, it get, that gives our kids a base rate of 90 credits if they pass those two classes and everything else. Um, the other thing, um, so we uh, last year or the last few years, um, they had already been in the process of redesigning a classroom. So we had a classroom that hadn't been used. It was an old computer lab. And so they were in the middle of turning it into a math classroom. And so we've kind of redesigned some of that um, to make it into a flexible classroom that has a, um, so it had a little L-shaped area that used to be a, an office. Um, we essentially took a wall, took a door off and took a window off so that we can reclaim it as student space. And that's another thing, you're trying to reclaim these spots as student spaces. And so we're using that to, um, we're gonna have a 3D printing station. They bought a vinyl cutter, so that's gonna be in there as well. We're also just gonna purchase 15 PCs and 15 Mac, uh, Mac laptops um, that can run graphic design pro programs, AutoCAD. Um, and then we're also gonna have a couple big screen TVs so that we can also use it as a, like, as a meeting room. And the really cool thing about this that I'm really excited is that it also allows us to partner with SRJC and SRJC can come and teach classes on our campus and so, and I'll get to that in a minute, um, but we needed up to 22. We only had space for 17. So this was Jenny's amazing, beautiful solution was the 15 uh, desktops and 15 Macs. So we're, so this is gonna enable us to have SRJC come and teach classes at our site. Um, and so that's the next thing. So um, we did a survey, 97% of our kids want to take SRJC classes on campus. And so we met um, Sue Taggart, who's our new math teacher, who's also phenomenal. Um, we met um, with the department chair at SRJC of computer science. And so there's essentially four things we wanna look at at offering at Laguna. Um, we want the kids to be able to at least do the first few classes for graphic design certification, um, IT certification, so they learn how to fix computers, 3D printing, because it's just really cool. And then also video game design, because again, we, it's, a, it's a, an emerging industry in Sonoma County and we want to give our kids the skills so that they can access that industry. So 97% of our kids are excited and are interested in this. And why this is so cool is because kids who take JC courses at a high school campus have significantly higher rates of attending college, of earning more credits in college, um, and they have higher rates of staying in college. And this is particularly true for, for our kids, for underrepresented groups. So I think like this is huge and monumental for, for our student population. Um, the other thing is that like, if we, wanna, if we want our kids to come to school, they have to want to come to school. There has to be something that drives them. They have, there has to be something that they love there. Um, and our, they want hands-on activities. Again, we gave the survey and that's what they're telling us. They wanna do things and have fun and, you know, 
So um, we, another thing we did is we took an, another old office um, and we reclaimed it um, and we're making a ceramics lab. We just happened to have hired an art teacher who's also a ceramicist. And so, and we already had two working kilns. Um, so the Kiwanis Club donated another throwing wheel um, and then we're gonna use CSI funds to buy a third one. So we essentially made a ceramics lab out of like an old office. Um, and this, that teacher also is interested in creating a sustainable living class. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, and then we're gonna continue with the garden program. If you guys have been to Laguna and I, I'm sure everybody has, um, we have the amazing, beautiful gardens. And one of the things that um, Joe Maloney does, which is super cool, he teaches the kids how to graft apple trees. So we have all that space on the perimeter of campus. So we're gonna plant those grafted apple trees because we have like 30 of them just hanging out in pots around campus. Um, and then we're gonna use those apples to, uh, with the apple press, um, and then we can process the apples into apple butter in our sustainable living course. Um, the other thing our, our kids and our families both really want are, are practical practical skills. And what I want is I want if we're going to I want practical practical skills that are part of a program that we can give kids credit for. Um, so we're looking at developing a sustainable living course. So it's like home ec for the 21st century. So how do we, yes, how do we balance a checkbook, but how do you spend money responsibly? Um, they want to, cooking, but also um, she's a ceramicist, the teacher who's interested in this. So like, you know, doing things like creating, you know, fermentation crocks where the kids can grow their sourdough cultures, um, things like that. Um, Far and away, our kids want culinary. I think it was 52% of our kids. That was their number one thing. Our kids want culinary. We don't have a kitchen, but we can cobble things together. Um, the Edmentum program actually has a food management and a food handling cert certification. So we can have kids do those online. Um, I contacted Ceres and Ceres is totally welcome and excited to, to partner with us so that the kids could do the food handling and the food management certification. And then um, once they do that, they can volunteer at series and we can give them credit for that. We can give them a free period in the day. Um, and then also if they do this in conjunction with a sustainable living course that we could potentially borrow the Annalee kitchen um, and we could have, we could teach them basic culinary skills in there as well. Um, graphic design. So um, the Adobe suite, we already offer graphic design in the district. Um, and so we have one of our teachers, Sue Taggart, is, willing, is going to learn how to teach the graphic design course so that kids can do the Adobe certification. If they pass the Adobe certification tests, and then they actually get college credit for it. It's also required for many of the, um, the prerequisites for the certifications for computer science at SRJC. So again, we're trying to get them high school credit, college credit, and a pathway to a, um, to a career. Um, a lot of our kids want construction too. And again, we don't have the ability to have construction on campus. We cobble it together. Joe Maloney builds things and amazing things, you know, like out of like spit and duct tape. Um, and so 42.5% of our kids want some sort of construction program. Um, so what we're trying to do is, again, if we have a sustainable living course, we could have them, we could teach the kids soft skills so that they can learn how to interview. And then as part of this program and as part of Joe's current, the construction class he currently teaches is we can also help them apply for the construction core. And if they get in, they can also give them credits for that. Um, as for monitoring the plan, um, we, I mean, we look at grad rates I and mean, grad rates are something that we pour over frequently. Um, grad status to see where our kids are, to see if they're making progress, where they need to go. Um, we are, I'm really excited that we are doing our site council and that we're going to try and meet quarterly as opposed to just once a year. Um, we are providing professional development. Um, again, we're partnering with SCO for some of it and our teachers actually do want to do another round of council training. Um, and actually community members and board members are welcome if they ever want to participate in, in the council training with us. It's pretty phenomenal. Um, and then we do want to continue to talk to our students and our parents in official and unofficial ways. I think that the food pickup has given us a lot of cool unofficial ways. Um, and I, I'm hopeful that school site council will give us more official ways. Tonight, I'm just gonna give an introduction because I'll be asking next month for you guys to approve this plan called the Comprehensive Coordinated Early Intervention Services Plan. Um, so a little bit of background on special ed program auditing. There's a lot. There's student level file review. There's categorical monitoring that happens every year. 
Um, if too many elements don't meet standards and are statistically worse than other districts, it triggers this thing called intensive review. review. And there's also a multi-year, um, which is actually the most intensive review, which is if you have equity ratios that are statistically worse than most districts and not met for three or more years in a row, then it triggers something called significant disproportionality. And um, we have some they're called set plans due for some of our categorical um, monitoring items. But what I'm really here to talk about tonight is that we are in this uh, statistical disproportionality where we need a CSACE plan. So um, the CSACE is a 27 month process. There is some funding involved. Um, and one of the little bits of funding is we're required to have a consultant to help us get through this process. On a really positive um, note, I, I feel like the training is amazing. We're not just doing busy work. This consultant is helping us, the process is helping us walk through really some significantly um, important things about um, how to apply a cultural lens when we look at our special ed services and how we're serving students. At this level, at the significant disproportionality level, it really is about a process that emphasizes a broad look at interventions and services and supports at general ed in order to avoid disproportionality within special ed. So it is, it's broad and overarching even though it comes from an equity and special ed lens. So if we look, 24.4% of our district students are Hispanic, 25.5% of SPED students are Hispanic. So we're not too far off there. But um, our 14.7% of students in special education is, is well above the state average. So that in and of itself might be a data point to make us look and say, what about our processes is not um, serving students before they find themselves in special education. So the, the data that got us to where we are, one is separate schools up here at the top, it says separate schools. And you can see that the, um, our numbers are pretty small. We have 14 white students in, in separate schools. So and two students who are Hispanic. So these are all the non-public schools throughout the county. Um, and we've been that way for three years. Okay, there we go. Um, the other place that we're disproportionate is uh, students with an intellectual disability we have 13 Hispanic students with an intellectual disability and seven white students with intellectual disability. And that is an indicator that it might be a little bit out of whack. So um, those are our two categories and kind of new this year, white students with emotional disturbance and by chance, white students with the emotional disturbance des designation are a big portion of our white students in separate schools. So this one all goes together. And by chance, we're, not, we're no longer on the watch list for Hispanic students with an intellectual disability designation. But because we were so far out of whack for three years in a row, we're still required to continue um, so that we don't go back into that category. So we did this huge process five different focus groups, lots of leadership meetings, stakeholder meetings, um, and, and we've come to some draft root causes. One is that we have an emergency, emerging system of academic supports for struggling students, and that's within general education, both Hispanic and white. There, there doesn't seem to be a discrepancy there. Um, the academic support class was one of the big interventions we put into place this year, and um, I'm hoping that that's helpful. A second draft root cause is 
social emotional supports for struggling students. This is the area that I think last year and this year we have made the amazing gains. We have these impact teams where all the student support services people coming come together and, and talk about the kids and, and problem solve. Um, and we have, like Ali mentioned, we have keeping kids in school. We have some organizations that are helping kids actually helping families one-on-one. -on -one. We have resources to connect families to um, therapy and counseling, great MFT teams. So I feel like this is one that, that has been a root cause and we're really, we're really killing it. Um, the next thing, lack of systematic assessment and intervention in math and English. Within the SPED students, our SPED students in particular are, are not performing very well on math and English tests. Um, so one of the things would be to look at perhaps how we're assessing ninth graders. Do we have formative assessment, systematic assessment that goes through and then targeted interventions especially at the freshman level. So, so that's looking like one of the draft root causes. Another um, thing that we found is that cultural factors influence mental health services and supports. So remember that one of the things we're out of, out of whack with is that we have so many white emotionally disturbed students. And by emotionally disturbed, think of how many students are struggling with anxiety and depression. And that though the Hispanic students are being served differently than the white students when the end result is different numbers. So we need to take a look at that and make a plan. Um, and then cultural factors appear to influence the evaluation and, and identification process. So this one is actually within the spe special education system. Um, and we want to make sure that as we do the big every three year periodic evaluations. We're working with um, with students and feeder schools and district psychologists at the sixth, seventh, eighth grade level. And we're making sure that our designations are correct, that um, the Hispanic families are being assessed or students are being assessed in ways for example, the easiest thing is um, using Hispanic assessment tools and evaluators so that we're treating both families the same. Um, so, so that's just the background of where we are with significant disproportionality. The, we, the next steps next week, we have a stakeholder meeting. Um, I, I'm sure there's people in the audience who have participated in our stakeholder meetings and our focus groups, and I'm forever grateful. Thank you, parents, for those of you who, who have participated and given your opinions and your experiences. Um, it, next week, we're gonna present these root causes. We're going to present draft activities and measurable outcomes that are aligned with the root causes, and we're gonna elicit their feedback. And what do you think of this draft plan? And then um, after stakeholders have had the chance to talk about it and, and pull it apart, then I'll present um, a, a plan on in November's board meeting to be approved and forwarded to CDs. 